Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. <laughs> Finally, I found the time that I could actually start thinking about the mounting of the Honda engine into the golf cart. As you know from previous six or seven episodes, successfully removed the engine from the golf cart, removed the pulley from the Honda, took the drive centrifugal clutch off of the Wisconsin Robin Fuji Subaru and uh, realized that the mounting holes were different of both. This is like seven inches by three inches. That's like maybe seven inches by four and a half inches. So this is gonna be a wider mount than this one. So I'm gonna have to fabricate some kind of mounting plate for the engine. Well, look. This cart itself, it's already mounted to this cart. If I could just cut around it, I would have that perfect mounting plate that I know accommodates this Honda engine because it's already bolted on there. So what I need to do is kind of mock up this engine in the golf cart and see exactly the placement of this white, the white frame plate, right? So I'd have to first remove the engine off of this cart so that I could kind of get a feel of it and also try to pick up this engine and put it there just to see where the crankshaft uh, ends, you know what I mean? Uh, and with the clutch on there, if it will line up with the original uh, transmission pulley, you know? Um, so in the previous episode, when we removed the clutch off of this one, and tried to put it on this one, it's different because this crankshaft is not tapered, but this one is. So I'm gonna show you the crankshaft on the Wisconsin Robin. As you can see, it is tapered. It's wider there, and then it slowly narrows to the tip. Also, look at the length of it, it's like two inches. If you look at the Honda one, the Honda shaft is about three and a half inches and it's not tapered. It's a one inch straight shaft with a keyway, which differs tremendously from this one. So theoretically, if I was to be able to mount the clutch onto there, it would be sticking out about an inch and a half more than this one would which means that I have to realign the plate to be about two inches more rear to where this one was, or to the right. Um, to fix the tapered part of it, when I put the clutch onto the straight shaft one, it goes in all the way, but there's some movement and play. So I ordered a $15 spacer that was made exactly for the conversion of a Honda clone or Predator engine to replace the original one. It was amazing because apparently a lot of people repower um, golf carts with Honda clone engines or Honda engines. So it was perfect. I found it on eBay. So apparently a lot of people do um, repower these golf carts with uh, another engine other than the original stock one. So I'm waiting for that part and that part should be able to solidify the centrifugal drive clutch from the Fuji engine to the Honda engine. Obviously, with this project, it takes a lot of fabrication and modifications to get it to exactly where it needs to be. So now I'm going to try to remove the Honda engine from this cart and then try to ouch, pull it into, um, into the golf cart just to kind of get an idea about where it sits and how it sits. This is the pulley that it came off of. I could still use this in case I needed to. You know what? I haven't started this engine in like a couple of weeks since I got it running. Let's just, let's just try. <laughs> just, just for the hell of it. Dum dum dum.
runs good. It doesn't even have a pulley on there, you know what I mean? So uh, I would probably have to hook up some kind of a throttle cable to the governor to give it the throttle and connect it to the gas pedal so that I could increase the speed of the crankshaft, therefore turning the drive shaft and all that. I'm really anxious to get the spacer for the uh, centrifugal clutch so that I could test whether or not that clutch retracts as it should in high revolutions when you increase the throttle. That'll be interesting. Um, so I'm gonna have to tilt this somehow to get to the bolts underneath. Or I could just grip it somehow with a wrench. But I really don't want to tip it, you know what I mean? Because the carburetor is on the front part of here, you don't want to tip it that way because oil will leak into the carburetor and you have a lot of cleaning to do. This is not so heavy because the dipsticks, one on this side, one on the other side, is in the rear of the engine. We just tilt it like this really quick. And that holds it in place, sort of. So I've got my first problem with fitment of this engine. So this is the way it's designed for the Wisconsin Robin engine. It's inset down onto these four bolts here. This bracket here is for the starter and it's free floating on a rubber stopper, insulator uh, cushion, if you will, that swivels, okay? Uh, this gets in the way and because this is so high, right, that it gets in the way of this cover. You see how, uh, when I measured here, this is nine inches from here to here, okay? And uh, it's also nine inches on the base here too, for the Honda. Nine inches from there to here. Of course, this uh, oil uh, reservoir drain plug adds another inch to it, so this makes it 10, which means that this bottom base of this Honda engine is not going to fit in that spot because of this one inch reservoir that sticks out, this hose, this is in the way. Also, even if I did, let's say, seal this hole, which of course you can't because some nub will be sticking out, otherwise you'll never be able to drain the oil, right? Um, without removing the engine just to drain the oil, it's ridiculous. Um, also, as you can see, it's nine inches, but look, it's not nine inches here because this cover is taking up the space. Plus this part here, the dipstick here, it's just shaped wider than the bottom base. You see? Same goes over here. I mean, look, you got the nine inches over here, but then look, just uh, two inches higher and you got this cover here that sticks out another six inches. So as this sits, it's no way that's going to fit in this area here because look, you got a wall that's high, uh, about five inches of a wall over here. 
And same goes for the big wall over here with this knob, uh, nu uh, nub over here sticking out. So there is no way that this engine is going to fit in that area right here. So I've got a lot of fabrication to think about. Uh, look, all we need is for the crankshaft drive clutch to be around here, <laughs> right? That's all we need. So that a belt could be looped around for the transmission pulley. And by the way, I tested the transmission, it does work. I put the thing into gear and uh, here, I'll, I'll show you. There we go, that's uh, forward, okay? You spin the uh, wheel, the pulley I mean, and the wheel moves, see? Forward. Now we can switch this to reverse. That's reverse. And the wheel goes backwards. So we know the transmission works, which is great. But what a pickle I'm in here, you know what I mean? What the hell am I going to do? I was hoping that it was just plug and play because um, I would use, this is the bracket for the starter generator and I wanted to try to use that. But if I remove that entire assembly to accommodate the engine, how am I going to get the starter to, fit, uh, to work, you know? So what I'm kind of thinking is make some kind of bracket that goes up here attached to these holes here that was supposed to be for the engine mounting for the original engine it was mounted with side bolts too maybe make a bracket so that if there's a flat plate right here you know what i mean a flat plate right there and if there's a flat plate right here this engine will go right on top of it bolt it down have the crankshaft aligned to be around here with the pulley and that's the only way. But would I use this free floating thing like this? You know, it moves around like that. But I think I would have to because otherwise how would I mount it onto this, you know? I'd have to think about this. It's gonna take a bit. Oh boy.
Well, I had to do a field maintenance. Uh, some of the strings off my uh, bag were coming loose and frayed. Pumped up the tires a little bit more with my new uh, Fantic tire inflator. And then while it was idling, it just stopped running. So I checked and it's out of fuel. So this gives me a perfect opportunity to fill up the gas tank because I'm gonna be using this a lot. I'm gonna be putting in some uh, Octane Booster from my friends over at Lucas Oil Farms. I have a regular 87 octane or 89 octane unleaded gas in here. And if you add um, some of this Octane Booster, it makes it seem like it's 103 octane. <laughs> so why not, right? Um, also helps clean the injectors because of the extra octane in it. And this thing's a beast. It takes up a lot of gas. But I haven't filled this up in a while, so it's about time. I'm going to be using this a lot to get to suck up all the leaves in my yard. Man, so I put two gallons of gas in there. I'm going to be putting in some Octane Booster for my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. I'm just going to put the whole jug in here, baby. This thing's going to be performing so well, it could fly to the moon. I was walking Boba, and uh, as you know, Boba always finds things. He led me to this four foot long, solid copper. My buddy Nick from Bellport tells me that they're not solid. It's just coated. Cut it and see. So I cut it. As you can see, it's solid copper. So I'm just going to ask like 40 bucks for these. I don't know what they use it for. I think they're earth round rods for electrical grounding in the ground. Anyway, uh, I know copper is worth money. Scrapyard, you get more than 40 bucks, but I don't want to go to the scrapyard. Just sell these locally. See if even if anybody wants it. As you can see though, they're solid copper. Scores. As you can see from the cart that it came off of, you have the holes that match the Honda perfectly because it was on here. It also has other holes here that you can shimmy it uh, half an inch over or back, you know, so that, that's why they have these holes here, you know. Uh, so look, it is conceivable that I'll just cut this part out, cut that out, cut the hubs out, right, so that because look, this goes in like that, right? There's a side here, right? The side. Drill holes in there. I think I could probably think about a way to do that. To use this part as the mounting plate on top and be able to bolt it into place. That's a lot of cutting. One that I'm not used to cutting, you know? And this is thick too. Really thick steel. So an even bigger problem that I have, I just measured the height of this engine and it's 17 and a half inches high. So if I put a plate down here, 17 inches and a half would have the engine up here. <laughs> if I had the engine up here, the seat wouldn't be able to come down. The dump bed wouldn't be able to come down. It would be too high. It has to sit like there. Yes, I could take the muffler off, which I plan on probably doing, and I could take the gas tank off too, but uh, I would need then a fuel pump with a pulse line somewhere there to power a fuel pump, and that's a pain. So now I'm thinking that I'm, I have to mount it down here, okay? And I would have to remove this entire bracket and make something else that's connect connected to the frame to get a plate just like that. So I'd have to remove this to get a better idea. Because as this bracket is here, there's no way it'll fit. Even if I wanted to put a bracket here, the engine would be too high. You see what I mean? Uh, I should just forget about this whole idea and just sell this thing as is, you know? I can't be afraid to do things. I'm just going to remove this bracket so I can get a better look at...
situation. Fresh battery. I'm going to have to bang that out. a lot of shims here lots and lots of them it's out this cart had a uh, uh, scrape plate I don't know what you call it it's a plate on the very bottom to prevent scraping or bottoming out you know I flip it upside down and I just laid it here just to get an idea that if I if I got a plate there would it fit <clears throat> It would have to be more towards this way. This cover would have to come off. It's tight, man. I mean, this engine seems like it's much bigger. The valve cover is right against the uh, this thing here for the transmission. But that's a linkage, though, so I could probably cut that part as long as this lever moves freely with the wire. It'll be all right. It's really tight over here on this side too. And oh man, but it looks like the height is okay. If I took this air cleaner off, actually it might still fit, but look, I've matched up the, um, I've matched up the engine crankshaft with the transmission pulley. There's the crankshaft. I'm going to put the clutch on. to go that way a little more but this air cleaner is getting in the way I don't know. Ooh, look at that that lines up pretty well 
this might work after all but I have to just figure out a way to securely mount that plate under there because right now it's just free floating you know now let's see a mock-up if I'd be able to put the thing down the bed sitting right on top of the uh, air cleaner and the gas tank. So I think it's okay. If I get rid of the air cleaner, because I, I plan on putting the muffler onto the original one, you know, so I still need to get rid of the air cleaner box somehow. You know what, sitting on there is fine. Let's see if the seat goes down okay. Yeah. Okay, so the engine fits. Shout out to Johnny Cunningham from Houston, Texas for buying one of my stickers. Also to channel 168 on YouTube for no donating $25 to the channel. Thanks a lot for your sticker purchases and uh, donations to the channel. It keeps the videos coming almost every day and uh, helps me attain parts to get my projects fixed. Again, I don't have a job. This is it. So every little bit counts. A dollar or two if you can spare it. PayPal.me slash mowers and blowers. If you enjoy the content, help it, keep, help it continue by donating a buck or two. So that's it. That's my day of kind of getting a better idea of how the fitment's gonna be to accommodate the new Honda engine, which is higher, wider, has things sticking out of it that the original engine didn't, had to remove a bunch of brackets, kind of mocked up a plate just to get an idea about how it sits and how the clutch is gonna, you know, match up to the pulley for the transmission. Again, I ordered the spacer for about $15. And you know, these, these, these monies that I spend on parts and stuff, they add up, especially for fabrication. And not to mention when I buy them, I'm not even 100% sure it'll fit. So it could all just go to waste. For instance, that $40 carburetor I bought for the original engine that I'm, it's just gonna be wasted, you know what I mean? Because I can't, be, I can't use it because that engine's dunsky, you know? So again, the donations really help if you guys are inclined to donate a dollar or two. It really helps up the channel and thanks for your contribution in advance. Uh, like I said, very long project. This is going to be, looks like it's going to go right into the winter and uh, I really need to get some other stuff out of the way because I keep concentrating on working on this thing and I'm not really getting anything else fixed, you know? So uh, I might hold off on this for a bit because I still have to wait for that spacer part for the crankshaft anyway. So I might work on some mowers, some snow blowers uh, coming up and maybe a deal with my friend Mike over at Mike's Lawn Service Bad has a couple of lawn tractors to give me and in return I have to fix or tune up his friend's uh, lawn tractor or riding mower. We'll see what happens with that but that ought to be kind of interesting. Uh, in the meantime I need to suck up some of these damn leaves. It's all over the place. But anyway thanks a lot for joining me on today's episode. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers really appreciate all the support also to keep the videos coming every day support the channel bye